Hello, I'm Hash. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to be talking over one of my paintings and um, just going through the, the, the weird and wacky process of uh, my painting style. Uh, so I've uploaded a few of these kind of speeded up versions of, of my paintings and I just thought I'd do one with a, a little bit of narration. Uh, just uh, like I say, to explain myself really. Uh, so I painted acrylics and I used very large flat headed brushes, certainly at the beginning of a painting and I don't do much in the way of drawing. Uh, so in that way, I guess it's slightly unconventional. Um, however, I, I, I mean, I painted for years. I've, I've never had a proper job. So um, I absolutely understand and know what the rules are. Um, it's just, this is the evolution of, of, um, of decades worth of uh, painting um, every day. So um, like I said, I'll quickly go through what I do. So this is uh, obviously a street scene I'm doing. Uh, but I always start off um, trying to do an interesting abstract. Uh, so I work from photos. They, they always uh, tend to be my photos. And this is a London scene. So obviously trips to London um, to get as, as much photo reference as I can. Um, and I think you're more attached to your, your own reference. So I start off with a large flat brush. Um, the ones I'm using are by De La Rowney. They're called System 3 um, Skyflow brushes. Um, they're actually quite floppy to feel, but once you load it with a lot of acrylic paint, they firm up. Uh, so that's really the key. You need to actually use quite a bit of paint for this process. But as you'll notice, um, there's hardly anything in the way of blending. It's very much kind of just get the big brush, load it full of color, um, and then just apply in one or two goes. Uh, that way you get the, the most out of the color. Because acrylic paint is water-based, the more you dilute it, the more you blend it, play with it, um, fuss with it, the color will just die. It doesn't matter how kind of good a drawer you are, the, the paint will suffer the more you, you, you annoy it. Uh, so really, you know, be quite confident about those, those marks. It's very difficult if you're a beginner because there's so much of play, you're thinking kind of the technical parts of the, the painting. Um, but at some point, once you learn the mechanics, if you like, uh, that's when you really enjoy uh, the process of painting because you feel like um, you've got a foundation, if you like, of, of a technician skill, and then you can be all arty about it. So um, you'll notice as the painting goes on, um, there's a lot more reliance uh, midway through and towards the end on the drawing side of it. And especially actually when you come to something cold, um, any scene that you're doing, you need time to warm up and, and to be expected to draw something straight away is a big ask. And also you become precious and um, a little bit needy about having to follow the, the, the sketch that you've done. So if you can just dive in, um, that really, really helps um, your enjoyment of the painting. And obviously I'm, I'm gonna do a few more of these um, somewhere down the line and, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably treat it a little bit more professional than this uh, slapdash approach at the moment uh, and go through and really break down uh, some of the things I've learned through, through just a lifetime of painting. Um, so like I say, started off very realistically uh, at the beginning of my career and then I've, I've evolved into this and, and simply because I enjoy it more. Um, it's very tedious. Um, gridding out and then using small brushes and, and stuff like that. If you can dive in uh, that spark of enthusiasm that you initially had from just looking at the scene, enjoying the process of painting, will will maintain itself throughout the entirety of the process. So it's one of the advantages, one of the huge, huge advantages of acrylics that, that the drying time will allow you to maintain your enthusiasm throughout the painting process. So if you imagine starting a painting and then having to wait a few days or have long, um, certain colors anyway, in, a, in oils uh, take to dry, I mean, by then you might have moved on mentally. So I absolutely love the idea of um, being grabbed by something and just sticking with that um, emotion until the end of the painting. You know, you don't then, um, you know, can't wait to see the back of it. You absolutely enjoy every little mark you make. So 
Um, once I've established the main structure of the painting with the big kind of slabs of paint, uh, and I should note that um, I, I don't over mix the colour as well. When it leaves my palette, I might mix it a little bit in my mixing tray. Again, I'll, I'll expand on this uh, somewhere down the line. It then goes straight on the canvas, so there's a bit of streakiness, and at some point I'll show some close-ups of uh, some of the paintings I do. Um, so once everything goes in, then I start adding tints. There's a lot more in the way of, like I say, the technician, the mechanics of, of the scene then where um, I, I absolutely feel my brain is starting to kind of be in tune with the scene a little bit. Um, however, I'm improvising with the fact that I love some of the early marks. I want them to survive um, through the onslaught of detail because obviously um, the detail is a big hook for, for most people. Um, but the, the more over polishing you do, the more the initial flurry of those interesting marks just die. So um, I use titanium white. Uh, again, that's, you know, for beginner, the, you know, you might not appreciate the different qualities of whites, but titanium white is a very opaque, very strong dominant white. And when you, when you just um, apply these really strong highlights, you need it to perk up against some of the, the strong color and tone. Um, so within the white, I've used colors. Um, so there's some light blue, lemon yellow is a great fizzy kind of warm yellow to, to get that white sparking up a bit. And this is obviously a, a gray London scene. So, you know, because you're doing a painting, you, you want it to, to, you know, appear a little bit more interesting um, from a color perspective and mark making perspective. And that's the other thing, too much polish just makes it look um, a little bit sterile and I, I like the idea that I'm, I'm a human being painting a scene I'm not trying to um, mimic a, a machine um, you know because unfortunately someone invented the camera so um, I need to showcase something of, of um, the fact that I'm interpreting and I'm trying to do that by showcasing the marks I use uh, and it's strange because I started off wanting to be a machine um, uh, by looking at a lot of 70s realism from America. Um, however, I, I grew to love um, slightly more impressionistic and expressionistic work. Um, again, very technical uh, if, if you're a beginner. But again, um, as I do more of these, because I'm so used to staying at home now uh, or being in my, my studio, that uh, I'd obviously like to, to just um, showcase this a little bit more, especially if you're new to uh, painting, because um, I've seen so many um, uh, art demonstrations online recently, and the focus on the, the technical aspects is, is amazing. And so there's a lot of those, and um, I thought the idea of you know you as a human being trying to be creative and do something that you know might might be based on a, a representational scene doesn't mean you then have to interpret it that way. You can you can choose to leave things out. A good example would be, as I put in the, the details, I'm aware that windows are very rectangular and uh, you know I've got to get anatomy right and stuff like that. But I can I can give you some information, but I don't have to, to dictate every single bit. Um, okay, so at this stage uh, and as soon as a stronger white goes in and this quantity of detail, uh, it kind of signals uh, coming to the end of the, uh, the painting. Um, I will do some where I slow down and maybe concentrate on, on certain scenes, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to put some stuff out there really just to, for me to learn about the, the technology side and, and even getting used to, you know, different angles and filming and narrating, which is um, probably the hardest part. Uh, Okay, so these details go in, and then this one, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, it's like the long goodbye, uh, where you just, um, you know, having to make decisions about, okay, what goes in? Is it sharp enough? Is it gonna be crisp enough? Um, because I'm a professional artist, there's a certain amount of finish you have to achieve. Um, I have noticed uh, doing a couple of these online, and when I do demonstrations um, around the country, um, it's a rough cut. Uh, and you can slightly get away with a bit more, especially with, with time constraints. Um, 
So I do notice that sometimes doing something um, either in front of an audience or when you're filming, um, it kind of puts a bit more pressure, which is a really good thing because um, like I say, it's, it's going to be slightly more exciting for that process. Um, okay, so I'm still using a relatively um, large brush in, in some people's eyes. Um, I do note that, like I say, this is slightly unconventional, um, even to some extent, um, uh, like I say, the, the, just the approach in general. Um, <laughs> I'm rambling now. Uh, okay, um, yeah, so just sharpening up things like um, the darks as well. Uh, just at the end, I tend to use um, almost a pure Prussian blue, a bit of burnt sienna, maybe a bit of violet in. That's the other thing. I, I don't um, stick to the traditional aspect of color mixing where you're meant to just have three, not more than three colors. Um, I love at least three colors and then more if uh, if I can possibly, uh, uh, you know, get away with it. Um, yeah, so just uh, adding a bit more balance on the, the, that side. Um, the left hand side of the painting as I see it just so it can uh, stand up to the amount of detail on the other side um, yeah so just little marks just here and there like I say I'll, I'll do a few more in the future and, and kind of break it down a little bit more um, yeah okay so yeah jump, just jumped forward a little bit a bit more light just picking my way very tempting just to just to go on. I mean, I used to spend a month on a painting, at least a month, putting all the, the little uh, foibles in. But I mean, this was done in, I think, two sittings. So a morning and then the next day I, I did an afternoon on it, uh, as well as work on other things. Uh, that's the other, the, the other thing. It's much more important for you to be fresh when you're, when you're painting. And okay, just a couple of other little touches here, to sharpening things up, little sparks of color through the traffic lights. Um, and that's about it so thanks very much for watching and yeah if you've got any comments any uh, criticisms used to that because uh, some people absolutely detest what I do because it's a bit too raw um, yeah please feel free to uh, put them in the comments below I hope you enjoyed it there'll be more coming shortly uh, and some other news as regards what I'm doing uh, painting wise but I hope you enjoyed um, the process and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.